Skimbles, Chlimbles, Wimbles, Blimbles. And welcome back to Devlog. In the last part, I worked on object squishing, and in this part, I'm working on wind physics. For wind physics, the first thing I had to do was set up an area for the wind to be contained within. This was very simple, I, I used a 2D box collider and then that was it, that was the entirety of the setup. If the player is in this area, they will have wind affecting them. If they are not in this area, they will not have wind affecting them. Full stop. Let's talk about wind visuals next. This is just a particle system of trails moving in world space up our, I guess in the direction of wind, but usually up usually up and having three different layerings of the wind effects to make it more visually like wind. The first layer is a soft, faded out, white texture thing that just goes up and wiggles around like wind. It's pretty easy. The second effect is a thicker, thinner version of this to have more tunish details of the wind, and the third layer is a more spread out, even more faded out, wiggly white texture for the wind. This is just to give the impression of wind wiggling. Finally, because I thought this was a rather basic of a visual, I also added a leaf texture or a leaf sprite that will follow the wind pattern of the movement pattern, so it's basically just a texture sprite that moves with the wind. And this just gives more visual feedback of something actually being pushed by the wind. It also looks nice. I like how the leaf is is looking. Next we have the wind actually push the player. We add to the player's motor scripting upwards amount or left right amount based on the wind direction. That's it. That's the entirety of this system. Devlog over. Bye! So the way the wind is actually added to the player's velocity is incredibly easy. I just add the value of the wind over delta time to the player's movement already. But there are some specific nuances, specifically with the player being able to run up walls or on ceilings. For example, if the wind was moving upwards in world space and the player was running up a wall, we wouldn't have to add to the player's gravity, we would instead be adding to the player's velocity because it is technically pushing them up the wall to making them move fast. So in this instance, we're going to change the direction of the wind to just add to the player's velocity amount. The same as if the player is running down a wall, we will find the direction of the wind and add the direction of the wind based on the downwards amount of the wall. Or if the player is running on a ceiling, we will have the direction of the wind for that as well. This would more so be if the wind is blowing left or right, so instead of adding velocity to the player to move left or right, they would have the opposite velocity added because they are upside down on a ceiling. But aside from this very specific case, Basically just add force to player. Next is some word or glitch with how this system works. It's not specifically a glitch, but with the hover mechanic in-game of the player falling over time with the hat inflating so they fall slower, an issue with this arose where if the player is hovering, because they fall so slowly as hovering, they will never actually reach the ground on normal wind pressures. For example, if the wind had a value of 12, the player would naturally fall slowly down this wind even though the wind is still pushing the player upwards, but if we are hovering, the player will never actually reach the ground because hovering falls so slowly that at a value of 12 wind, they would just be pushed up for the amount that they are falling down. And this is somewhat of an issue because it makes hovering just stick the player in mid-air and look very bad if they're in a wind area. So I had two solutions for this. The first being that I looked at the value for wind and then saw at what point the value would have to be changed to make hovering feel as much of an influence as falling normally. So if the player falls normally at a value of 12, I would have to find a value of wind when hovering, that the player would fall at the same reduced weight. And this was basically just testing different values to see what modifier I could apply to the wind to make it less intense when hovering. The value I found was 0.25. If I multiplied the y value of the wind by 0.25 if we are being pushed down, then when hovering, the player is going to be pushed down by a lesser degree by the wind. 
if they're being pushed down by the wind. This makes the wind usage when hovering actually work, so hovering isn't just this overpowered floating state when in wind, and it makes it feel like it is interacting with the player in the exact same way as would normally happen when not hovering. Finally, when hovering, I also have an override where if the player is hovering in this wind section, they will always be pushed upwards by the wind. This is to make it so I can have sections where, when normal movement, the player would fall down the wind, but when hovering, they will be pushed upwards and actually float above the wind. I feel like this could make for some interesting platform areas where the player has to manage if they are hovering or they aren't hovering, because if they aren't hovering they would fall into spikes, but if they are hovering there could be some hazards above them that they have to have managed, and I think this could make some areas that are windy a bit more dynamic. And this was done very easily, if this override is active and the player is hovering, they will just be pushed upwards to a certain amount, if the Y value of the character is above a certain amount, as in they are traveling faster than they would need to when going upwards, we will just limit the wind value back to normal if the wind value would not, by default, had the player be vertically moving in a large way, so the player wouldn't be floating upwards very dramatically. And that is the entire wind system, I'm going to be completely transparent with you on this one. The entirety of the system took at most one hour to make. This was incredibly simple, I cannot stress enough that if you make a movement script for a player in an oddly specific way, adding little overrides or scripting to modify the player's movements in very minor ways, like this, is incredibly easy. Do it! It's really, 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 really easy. Make your own movement control, you can just do- you can just make wind very easy, it's super simple, wind good. Um, realistically, I like the system, I like adding it to the game, I know I say that every single time, but I really enjoy everything I make. But I'm glad I had the system in the game. Um, I think having wind as a hazard in some levels, or some chapter designs in my game, is a pretty good design choice. I know in some areas in video games, wind physics can be a bit of a bother, but overall I think if it is designed for accommodation to wind, Adding such a thing to a video game can be pretty fun. I also like how it looks visually. Usually I'm a bit apprehensive of making some particle effects to accommodate for a world space thing when I could just animate something, but I think in this instance the wind effect, because it has to look so organic, works pretty well for the game. And it also matches the art style. And it also is the end of the devlog. Goodbye, I love you.